Coming up on this episode of the Beer Muta Triangle. Their slogan is real good beer made by real good people. That is incorrect. And we are a Bavarian brewery. Um, there was no way of changing recipes. I mean, they were proven. And for me, coming into the picture 14 years of everything started, um, yeah, no, no way there were any changes. The craft beer industry in Montana has been booming over the past decade and is now over 70 breweries and counting. In each episode, the Bermuda team sets out on a Montana beer venture, highlighting the great beer, people, and places you may want to visit on your travels. Hi, Montana beer and adventure enthusiasts. I'm Kate Bernat, your beer venture guide for this episode of the Beer Muta Triangle. On this episode of the Beer Muta Triangle, we're kicking it off here at the Capitol Building in Helena, Montana, then making a few stops along the way before we wind up at Blackfoot River Brewing. Broadwater Hot Springs is great for families, something that families can come out and enjoy together. Being a couple miles out of town, we do need to do what everyone else can, and that's hot water. And so we're super proud of that, and uh, we are the only hot springs in Helena. So the new area you see behind us is our tap room um, and grill. It's the new area that we just opened this year. So now we're here inside the Springs Tap Room and Grill, which is looking right out onto Broadwater Hot Springs. Very cool view. And I'm noticing they have a lot of awesome local Montana beer, which is very cool. And I understand you sometimes do tap takeovers with breweries here? We do tap takeovers. Tap takeovers are when a brewery comes in and literally takes over multiple taps with all of their beer. So it's a great way to become familiar with a brewery you might not know about because you're trying five or six, you know, little samples of their beer. And there's also a full service restaurant. We do, we serve lunch and dinner. Um, we have the people that come out and do mountain biking. A lot of trails lead downtown. We are blessed to have really good convenient access to public land, open lands, and uh, that connects out into the forest and beyond. So that's that access to public lands is really what makes Helena is a fantastic place to be a mountain biker. And do those trails also lead to breweries? For us, a lot of the times we hit the turnaround point on the ride, somebody will point out that we know where there's a beer or there's a beer waiting for us at the Blackfoot or hey, let's go down to the Blackfoot and get a beer before they close. A lot of group rides around here. Um, we're looking at the clock and trying to make it down here before last call. So, you know, trying to get here to the Blackfoot by 745 so that we can get that last call. That's, uh, that's not uncommon. So they just go together really well. Tell us a little bit about the trails uh, you were riding today. Uh, today we actually went and shuttled the ridge. So Mount Helena Ridge, seven miles. I want to start with yeah, coming up. There's one more cyclist behind me. Yeah, okay, really Thank you. Important. Thank you very much. Up to a uh, Forest Service trailhead and then, yeah, pedal all the way back to town. And we're going to finish our rides by coming into the Blackfoot. Yeehaw! Blackfoot, it's not uncommon to see about a quarter million dollars worth of bikes parked out in front of this place. It is kind of a haunt for a lot of the mountain bikers. Yeah, there's uh, no shortage of trails that end here. We started actually last century, 1999 is when we first rolled out our first keg. Uh, we originally had a homebrew supply store and thought that that was good, learned a lot about beer, loved it, got to talking about how Helena downtown, Helena spe specifically, could use a nice little brew pub. And so that's what we started in 1999, uh, seven barrel system, uh, loved the location, had to kind of teach people about good beer. At that time, that, that's the biggest difference between when we started and now. Now we have people who come in, they know good beer, mm -hmm. and that, that's what they grew up with. A single malt IPA is our best-selling beer and what we're best known for. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been making it for a long time, for about the last 15 years. I think we came up with the recipe in 2002, and it's changed a little bit since then, but uh, we like to think it just keeps getting better. Unlike a lot of beers that are made from a variety of different malts, um, this beer is made entirely from just one malt. It's made from crisp maris otter, floor malted barley, um, some of the most uh, um, desirable and expensive barley in the world. IPAs are hop forward, but yours has really good balance from that maris otter malt you were talking about. How can people find it and where can they find this beer? Um, you know, it's available in approximately about 150 restaurants and taverns across uh, five towns in western Montana only. 
And uh, I appreciate you noticing that about the IPA. It is, uh, I've always been a really big fan of balanced beers, neither, uh, neither too bitter, neither too sweet. And I think that um, there are a lot of IPAs out there that are somewhat unbalanced. And, and that was one of the ways that we always set this beer apart was uh, it is an IPA, but it also has some really nice malt flavor. Here at the Blackfoot, we decided that we would like to be a draft only brewery. Um, some of that is, you know, it, we like the, the way our beer is on draft. We don't feel the need to put it in packaging. We think it comes across a lot fresher and uh, kind of a more original packaging than the bottle or can. We focus on quality beers and a large variety of beers. Uh, last year we brewed 43 different beers. This year we're shooting for 45 different beers and we will hit that by the end of December. They moved over here and expanded, but didn't get big. Blackfoot's main mission is to make great beer. They don't want to make a bunch of money. They don't, they, they want to be true to their customers and true to their craft. Blackfoot, ha their slogan is real good beer made by real good people. That is incorrect. It is the best beer on the planet made by the best people on the planet. Blackfoot is family. And you have a pretty intense uh, symbol of your devotion to this brewery. Do you wanna, you wanna show us? You bet, I'd love to. Coming up next. You're constantly making something new to keep it exciting for people. And. We've been touring breweries, we're a little tired. Tell us, uh, have you found a place for us to stay tonight? <laughs> yes, in fact I have. When I started it was three beer styles plus a seasonal on a weekly basis. Now we're up to, I don't know, 14, 16, 17 different uh, beers. So um, interesting, back in the day there were not that many different breweries. Now look at the shelves. Uh, Montana brews, the big domestic brews, and a lot of uh, out-of-state breweries here on the shelf. The Beer Muta Triangle Series is sponsored by Town Pump Food Stores. Wherever you may travel across Montana, you're certain to find one just down the road. Town Pump Food Stores remind you to enjoy responsibly. Transportation provided by Montana Adventure Shuttle. something about American made stuff I like. I feel like our niche is being in this neighborhood. We are kind of the friendly neighborhood brewery. Outlaw was not always in this location, correct? Right, so we opened up uh, six years ago. Uh, we opened up on a super shoestring budget while I had a day job. Um, we had a two barrel system, most of which I put together from things I found literally at the Goodwill thrift store. And we opened up sharing space with a barbecue place out in Belgrade. Um, we had a 250 square foot brew house, which was teeny tiny. And then we outgrew that space and went into this much larger building. And uh, with moving into this facility, we started packaging into cans as well. Um, you know, when we built this building, um, me and my staff, we built the bar, we tiled the bathrooms, we built all the stools in here, a lot of the furniture we built or we found on the side of the road and refurbished and uh, did all the wainscoting, all, most of the picture frames. And um, when we built this, you know, there's a lot of gun hangers, wall hangers on the, on the wall. When we built it up, we wanted there to still be a little cowboy left in Bozeman because I felt like there's a lot less cowboy in this town than there was when I moved here 18 years ago. And I felt like there should still be some cowboy in, in, in Bozeman. 
So yeah, you guys can your beers, and it's winter right now, so you have your all-time pale ale in cans. Um, talk to me a little bit about why you did a pale ale for the winter when everyone else is doing stouts and things yeah. like that. Yeah, well, that's kind of the reason right there. Is everyone's doing dark winter beers. I'm a big skier. The owner is a big skier. So we wanted to do something that you can drink all day. You're not going to get sick of it. It's not too bitter, not too hoppy. It's just a nice, light beer to have on the mountain all the time. I think every brewery kind of has its vibe. And our vibe is, uh, okay. I think we're much more the working man's brewery in town. Most of the guys who will start filtering in here in a few hours, they got mud on their boots. They've been working outside all day. You won't see it on the East Coast, but you'll see it in the Rockies. And you'll see a lawyer sitting next to a concrete worker who's sitting next to a banker who's got a movie star at the end of the bar. And everyone hangs out and no one's, everyone finds some common ground. And I've always think that's really, really neat. And when I come in here on a Saturday to come check temps or whatever on beer, and I see some long haired kid wearing telly boots, hanging out with a cowboy, I, I feel like I did a good job. On Tuesdays they do this funny thing they do, it's called Tough Guy Tuesday, and there's a pull-up bar, yeah. And people, people do pull-ups for 25 cents off per pull-up per beer. How many pull-ups are people doing? Sometimes they do way more than they need to, just to show off. <laughs> I like the idea that this brewery is maybe kind of your gym. Yeah. And then I think the really neat thing about it is, if you're up there and you're doing them really clean, you get heckled. And if you're up there and you can only bang out four of them, you get encouragement. And it, it's just one of those things that really exemplifies like the family feeling that I think we have in this, in this tasting room. What I love about my job and what makes me want to come in every day is you're constantly making something new. We're doing new recipes probably from scratch once a month um, to keep it exciting for people. And I love seeing people come in who are regulars and they're like, oh, cool, milk IPA, like you got a hoppy lager. Just doing new things is, is why I do it. You know where it comes from? You know who made it? We, no, you know, who, you know where it came from. It's American made. The and stuff came, it came from around here, it's local. And here it probably came from your neighbor. Like you could go shake yeah. the brewer's hand if you wanted to. Yeah, I know Todd, yeah. Beer has got a lot more creative. Um, there's still the traditional style lagers and ales, but you know, people are way more excited than they used to be about uh, Belgian black IPA and barrel aged beers and super hop forward IPAs. So there's just a lot, lot more people drinking craft beer, and it's it's changed the way it's done. You mentioned barrel aging. Are there barrels somewhere in this brewery with beer in them? There are. We're down to three right now. So we got three barrels of Belgian quad, probably going on 18 months maybe. The quick summary of it is you have old barrels that were used to age whiskey. You fill them up with your beer and you tuck them in the corner, and you let them hang out. And when you're done, you have a nice uh, kind of whiskey oak infused beer. So when we are here in Bozeman, like this is my girl that I'm gonna go to to learn what's awesome here in Bozeman. And she has a wealth of knowledge about Bozeman beer. So what is cool about Outlaw? Outlaw always has a great beer selection. You can always come in here and count on there being, you know, something for everybody. So I think that's one of the great things about Outlaw is that and there's also just, you know, there's a lot of space in here. They've got the upstairs now that they run out to people for special events. Um, it's just a fun atmosphere. Nice. So we've been touring breweries. We're a little tired. Tell us, uh, have you found a place for us to stay tonight? <laughs> um, yes. In fact, I have. <laughs> oh, good. I've uh, booked your reservations at the Learkind Mansion. Oh, that so sounds fancy. What is that? It's a very historic place in town. It was a, it's a mansion that was built by um, a German brewer who moved here. He, uh, he built this place, it's called Bozeman Beer Lager, was the usual brewery name, and rumor has it that the mansion, the bricks that they used to build the mansion, each brick was soaked in beer. Um, it's, it's got a lot of history. It's a really cool place. There's a lot of antiques there. It's very much still to period. 
Tell us a little bit about this house when it was built and why. Well, it was built in 1897. It was the brewmaster's home built by Julius Lairkind for him. And he had two years prior finished his Bozeman Brewery right next door across what was Aspen Street at that time. So he got the brewery going first, so there was some moolah, and then the house was built. <laughs> yeah, can't build the mansion until you have the Yeah, you got to get the beer going. you got to have the important things first. <laughs> And then um, when, did it, when did it come into, into your hands? So my business partner and I purchased uh, the Lairkind in uh, 1996. It was a Friday the 13th of November that we signed the paper. So we just finished our 21st year of being in business here as an operating bed and breakfast in, in this home. Great. So tell us how people can, can stay here. Uh, we're on the web. It's the Learkind Mansion Bed and Breakfast, but our website is bozemanbedandbreakfast.com because we were the first bed and breakfast to have a website in Bozeman, so we got that. And uh, that's the best way to see as much information as possible. You can always give us a call. Happy to talk with you. How many rooms are here? Well, in the main house, the, the original brewmaster's home itself, there are three primary guest rooms with one little add-on if someone's got a teenager that wants their special space with their own little balcony, it's there. And uh, we have another older home that we actually moved to the site and put it right beside, setting back on the site. And it has six rooms. So we can sleep technically 18 people. And what were some of the considerations you, you, know, you had to make when selecting furniture and decor for a historic home like this? Well, we were just wanting to take it back in history so that when guests arrive, they feel like they've stepped back into 1897. And so we wanted to make it all one what, cohesive thing. Uh, some places will do, you know, one room, one period, one room, another, what have you. But we felt like the house is 1897. It needs to look 1897. It feels 1897. Yeah, we, we lived in antique stores, and we kind of let the pieces speak to us. If you know, they were to be in the home, they ended up here. Okay, so this was one of the most unusual pieces that we found when we were trying to furnish the home. It is an 1897, same age as the house, Regina music box. And music boxes, were most of them were tabletop versions. The Regina company here ended up making a five-foot version, and later the seven-footers, they only produced 300 of them, we're told, and there's maybe 25 still in existence. It's amazing because it's on a spring housing. There's no electricity to this thing, and yet it has such an amazing sound. And we have the disc here. Each disc is one tune, and we happen to have 12 currently. Everywhere there's a hole, the metal is punched through, curled around, makes a little nub, so the back is rough. Those little nubs, as it's being rotated by the spring housing, they catch along this line here on the star wheels, turning them, making them pluck the teeth of the combs. So all the tones come from these two combs. That's why it's a true music box. Thanks so much for having us last night, Chris. It was a great stay. Oh, it was wonderful having you all here. The Beer Muta Triangle Series is sponsored by Town Pump Food Stores. Wherever you may travel across Montana, you're certain to find one just down the road. First Montana Bank and Stampede Packing Company, maker of redneck brand cottage bacon, maple sweet hams, and distinctive sausages. want to see you tag us on facebook for your chance to be part of the show clothing provided by montana roots visit mymontanaroots.com we do up to a thousand eleven hundred barrels um, in a month so that is quite some beer at Byron Brewing with owner and master brewer Jürgen Noller. Thanks so much for having us. No, thank you guys for coming. Prost. Prost. Byron has the distinction of being the oldest 
still operating brewery in Montana, quite a feat. Well, before I came here to Missoula, Montana, uh, I've never really worked for a brewery that was less than 400 years old. I mean, if somebody comes all the way over from Germany just to brew beer, can't be all that bad of a guy. I like coming here because the beer is always consistent. It's the uh, German-made beer, and it's pretty delicious, and uh, I know all the people that work here. And I've been a fan of Bayern since its beginnings in Missoula, the first true brewery in Montana in the modern era. And Jürgen Noller puts out a great product, and he's got a great group of people here working for him that are very dedicated to the, the brewery and the product and the people that come here. It is a concept. I mean, it is a, a concept of sustainability. So you're doing it yourself. You're not farming it out. You're trying to get local resources. You're trying to have everything fit together. I mean, you cannot have integrity a little bit over here and a little bit over here. You either have integrity or you don't have integrity. And that's what Bayern is about. We, that's a legit brewery with integrity, with standards, and with principles. and. Uh, it follows all the way through. So we had an area here where we could fit in the kitchen. I mean, it, it, what we're having here is more is more bistro because we we could not have like six pages of uh, menu items on there. But I thought uh, let's do something that is good, that's easy, that's uh, uh, something that people understand. What we like to do here is we like to follow through with things. If we do it, do it right, or don't do it at all. Not. Do it halfway, but give it a cute name and, and, and then that make people believe that that's what it's supposed sure. to be. In the beginning, they were all Jürgen's recipes. They're really classic Bavarian brews. Uh, lately, there is um, a little bit more influ influence of my uh, ingredient choices um, that are shining through. Um, but in the beginning, and this is what we are, we are a Bavarian brewery. Um, there was no way of changing recipes. I mean, they were proven. And for me, coming into the picture 14 years after everything started, um, yeah, no, no way there were any changes. The bottle washer is uh, just another German soul shining through what we do here at the, at the brewery. Um, bottle washing is a very common thing in Germany. Most of the breweries, if they're small or big ones, they have their own bottle sorting, their own bottle washing. So coming over here 16 years ago or 30 for Jürgen, it was very strange to see uh, a six pack basically essentially was garbage. Once it's empty, it went into the trash. To now, five years ago, we actually have a bottle washer where the glass gets washed and it will get another round out in the market. Up to the point where it's no longer just Bayern glass, it's uh, everybody who uses a paper label, a label that can be washed off in a brown glass beer bottle, 12 ounces, um, that is not embossed. Thank you for watching this episode of the Beer Muta Triangle. We're here at Bayern Brewery in support of the Hops for Hunger. Breweries across Montana are helping the Montana Food Bank Network through this program. And you at home can help too. Log on to mfbn.org. Next month, we'll be heading north to the Foy's Lake Pond Hockey Classic. You can follow along on all our beer adventures on Facebook or BermudaTriangleMT.com. Thanks for watching this episode of the Bermuda Triangle. Check out our website, BermudaTriangleMT.com, to watch current episodes, learn about new ones, and special features not found in today's show. The Bermuda Triangle was created by Brand Edge Marketing and produced by Gravity Media Productions. The Beer Muta Triangle Series is sponsored by Town Pump Food Stores. Remind you to enjoy responsibly. First Montana Bank.
and Stampede Packing Company. Remember, keep your adventures alive by enjoying responsibly.